Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Redberry Rio here, and welcome back to another quick Civil Air Patrol video. In today's video, I am talking about the After Action Report, which is an SDA or a staff duty analysis that cadet officers are required to complete once per achievement, and they do a written portion and an oral presentation. And so in this video, I'm primarily going to focus on the written component because the oral presentation is pretty standard in the, in the way that you address it and present it because the rubric is the same across all of them. I will briefly talk about it and how it's applicable to the after action report, but we're focusing mainly on the written portion for today. And for those of you who would like additional information on SDAs, I will include a link in the description of this video to the SDA website on the National Civil Air Patrol website. And on that site, you'll be able to find all SDAs, exemplars, rubrics, and any additional information you are looking for. So this video is just to sort of summarize the after action report and provide it as a resource for you all, whether you are someone who's grading one or trying to complete one for an achievement. So let's get started. My first recommendation is to first look at the exemplar before you get started. And if you are grading, look at the rubric first. So as someone who is writing it, please look at the exemplar and then the rubric because it'll serve as kind of a visual guide and walk you through what the rubric is covering. And then as a grader, look through the rubric first and then you can look at the exemplar because the cadets typically try to follow that format that's seen in the exemplar. The after action report is a very useful tool when it comes to leadership. And there are a couple reasons for that. First of all, you want to make sure that you are reflecting on the overall process of what happened with whatever it is you were conducting an after action report on. For example, if you conducted an aerospace education activity and you want to conduct an after action report, then you can definitely do that. And then you'd be able to provide that to the current staff in the squadron. Or if it was a group level activity, then maybe it could be posted in the group level documents. And so anyone in the group could take a look at that documentation and say, okay, so this was an aerospace activity. Here's what went well. Here's how they recommend to improve it. And I can take that and use that to succeed in the future. It's also useful if you are planning on personally doing something again, then you can look back at the document and jog your memory of what actually happened during the activity. Because sometimes people might think really highly or really poorly of something after a long time and just kind of making those generalizations. And so in the after action report, you can include specific key information outlining what your objectives were at the beginning and if you were actually successful in meeting those objectives. Next, we're gonna go into each of the different steps. I'm personally looking at the rubric for the after action report in which we will look through each step and their specific criteria so that I can kind of help you guys be a little bit more successful with those, hopefully with giving some recommendations for each step. The first thing that you really need to clearly have indicated on the after action report is the activity itself, when it took place, any key staff associated with it, and the author, I mean, you, if you are writing one, in, in a very clear way, right? So normally when you include an author, you include it at the top of the document somewhere, and then you might also include it at the bottom. So then if anyone has questions or wants to follow up with you, then they know, okay, this person put together the after action report and I, I can reach out to them. Upon adding in all that information on the key personnel and who's writing the after action report, you're going to go into what the expected outcomes were before the activity was actually completed. And the reason for that is whenever you have a meeting, whenever you have an activity, no matter what, you should always have objectives that you are trying to meet. And if you do not have objectives, how do people know what you're working towards? How do you know what you're working towards? And so by having objectives clearly listed out from the beginning, then you can integrate those into your after action report in reflecting, did we actually have clear objectives? And if so, did we actually meet those? And you do that reflection later on. Then you will go into specifically what actually happened. And whenever you have feedback, it has to be specific, 
right? So when you are making these observations, talking about the facts of here is what was observed during the activity is important. And just being general about it, like it was fine. No one's going to glean anything from that. And you won't be able to glean anything from it either because if you're trying to remember, like you did it a year or two ago, you're not going to be able to remember specific details potentially at that point. And so by including specific observations of what actually happened during the activity, it's very good and important to include in an after action review. Then we go into what went well and explain why things were successful. Let's say as an example, you're a squadron commander for an encampment and you have to write an after action review on how you thought the activity went. When you're writing the section on what went well and explaining briefly why it went well, you could talk about the camaraderie within your unit in that when the flight sergeants and flight commanders were training, you explicitly asked them, do not yell at the students unless there is a specific safety concern and there's someone really in danger. Otherwise, maintain different tools for adjusting intensity without yelling at people. Using your diaphragm, you can be louder when appropriate, but don't yell at people. And you could say that that's something that went well because from the get-go, the students automatically started creating more trust and bonding with each other and with their staff earlier than what may have been observed with other flights that did not use that training technique. In fact, that's something that I had observed personally with the, with my squadron a couple of years ago. So just putting that out there. But anyway, the reason why was because they were working together. They came together, they earned honor flight very early on. One of them earned honor flight of the week, which is like the strongest performing flight out of the entire encampment. And that's because the flight staff created that culture and the squadron itself created a positive working culture of respect and trusting the students without yelling. So that could be a, an example of saying something that went well. And then for areas for improvement, let's say, let's go back to the encampment example. Let's say that your squadron was supposed to go do a rappel tower. And when you go out to do the rappel tower, you're asked to go into the, you're load into the vans at like eight in the morning. You're supposed to do the rappel tower at nine and it takes a couple of hours. So you're not supposed to get over to the dining facility until about noon right? Let's say at the activity itself, instead of you being able to do the rappel tower, the, the rappel people might have been late. And when you got over to the rappel tower, it was locked. So you had to sit outside for a while and then things weren't set up until like 10 and you were just sitting there for a really long time. And the cadets started getting really hungry because you weren't done at the rappel tower until 1.30. That would be something to explain, including the observations in a factual manner, saying this is what happened, and then why should we improve upon it, and what specifically could it be improved. That could be that instead of having the students eat at the DFAC, for them to just plan on packing sandwiches, and then bringing the sandwiches out and then whenever the cadets finish doing the rappel tower, they just get to eat. That could be something as a mitigation in the future to avoid something like that happening where people are hungry and they're tired because they haven't eaten anything and they just worked really hard doing the rappel tower. So that could be a potential example of something that could be improved upon, which is that next portion after saying what went well, talking about those areas for improvement. The next item on the rubric discusses that observations should be big picture. And that's something that we try to teach in phase three and phase four, which is why it's part of the SDAs. Big picture thinking is essentially looking at how everything connects together. So instead of, let's go to an encampment example, instead of saying, oh, I twisted my ankle and I was just really angry about it for the entire week because I felt like I shouldn't have done that and it was really silly and bleh. Sure, you could say that and you could discuss 
overall safety concerns so you could shift that focus of you or maybe one of the students individually doing that you could talk about how when there was a pothole in the road instead of just not doing anything about the pothole someone could have flagged it or marked it with a cone so that no one is twisting their ankles in the hole and avoiding that pothole if they're in vehicles so that no one pops a tire Right, so that's an overall safety thing. If there's ever that kind of safety hazard in the future, recommending overall safety improvements by thinking of that specific example and then applying it to the overall activity. At the beginning, you discussed what your objectives were. What you'll have to do somewhere in the writing is discuss, did you actually achieve those objectives? And how effective were you in meeting those? And if you can include any statistics associated with it, then that's something really good to include. For example, if you're doing a recruiting event and you, you had the objective of recruiting at least five people or recruiting a couple of people, you may not have been specific, but you should be, just saying, but recruiting five people from this recruiting event. You could use statistics in saying, okay, within the last month and a half, we had seven new cadets join and several of them were a result of the recruiting event. So if you were doing an after action review of this recruiting event, you could say, yes, we were successful in accomplishing that objective by having seven cadets join our unit within the last month and a half going beyond exceeding our expectations with our goal of having a couple or even five joining. It is important to note that on the rubric, it lists 11 major topics and cadets are required to include at least five. And with each of those five, you have to have three subtopics when creating the after action review. If a cadet chooses to do all of them, then wow, that's super detail oriented, but they're only expected to do five and normally ones that best align with the activity itself. One of the major categories is transportation. If transportation is not applicable to your after action review, then don't use that one. As an example, if, if there are cadets driving to an activity and they are providing their own transportation prior to starting things, yes, you could talk about how people had to drive themselves, but you won't have additional information beyond your personal experience and what you've heard from other people. So if transportation is not specifically applicable, then don't use it. Use another one because there are 11 different ones and you have to just use five. The next point is to be professional when providing the information. So if there was an activity that you really did not enjoy and you're putting together an after action review, be diplomatic about it. Like people put in time and effort to create the activity. And if you were a participant, then you may not have seen everything going on. Like it could have been a complete mess and you just didn't know it. So really be professional about how the information is portrayed and be careful about playing the blame game. Like it's their fault. Like that doesn't benefit anyone. So just avoiding that. The next one is to discuss how key stakeholders were involved with the planning of the activity. So at the beginning, I mentioned you should include key players who were involved. So talking about maybe key senior members who were involved, key cadets who were involved, who the participants were, if it was senior members or cadets, and how were they involved? with the process. If you were doing a senior member professional levels training, I mean, this is for the SDA, but let's say if you were a senior member and you were doing a professional levels training, your key audience would not be cadets. It would be senior members, right? So how were, ever, how was everything communicated to senior members? How were they involved with the planning? Were they engaged in any way? and how might they be engaged in the future to better the training. And the last two are being free of grammatical and spelling errors. So read through your work, please. Have a parent or a friend read through it before submitting, maybe. This is my recommendation. And there is also the idea of the report benefiting the leadership in the future if someone was to do 
something similar or exactly the same as the activity that was conducted and the after action review was done for. So that is everything wrapped up for the written portion of the SDA after action report. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the oral portion, just generally how I would structure it and I would recommend to cadets if they are presenting. Just follow a similar structure to how the essay is set up. With the oral presentations, you're supposed to present for no more than 20 minutes. And basically you just introduce yourself. You say, today we're discussing the winter encampment and the after action review for squadron two, right? And then maybe prefacing each of the body paragraphs. So talking about those objectives, if just previewing meeting objectives, talking briefly about what went well, what didn't go well, all of those things and wrapping it up. Because honestly, the way you structure your essay is pretty straightforward to convert into an oral presentation for the after action review. Like the resume is very difficult to turn into an oral presentation. Why? Because it's a resume. Like you're talking about yourself and your experience and explaining what might be important about your experience or elaborating on personal anecdotes, but that's much more challenging to structure into a speech than this essay, because this essay already gives you a structure and a blueprint to be successful. So my hope is that once you have completed the essay portion, the speech should be pretty straightforward. And I have been impressed in the past when I've been grading SDAs that there is a, a wide range of submissions I have seen from SDAs. And sometimes cadets include very detailed PowerPoints when they are providing their oral presentations. And it serves as a good guide for them if they, if they need to be reminded of, oh, what's the next thing? They can briefly look at the slide and it'll have like a reminder point for them as they present the information. And some cadets don't use any at all. They just speak at extemporaneously, which means they just kind of generally know what they're going to talk about and they just are able to talk about it. Some cadets, they try to read from a script. And I, I'm sure you can figure out on your own who may have been more successful and who may not have been as successful. But generally, I like to speak extemporaneously. Not saying you have to do that, but that is what I do because I like to be engaging and lively. So <laughs> that is the end of today's video. If you have any questions about this SDA, I know it can be a little challenging or daunting to put together at first, especially if you've never done it before. Again, if you're a cadet putting it together, just take a look at the exemplar first and be like, oh, that's it, okay. And then if you are a senior member grading, then just take a look at the rubric. Um, please know that if there are certain categories that the cadet gets a zero in, then they are required to resubmit. I did not discuss those specifically today, but when you're looking at the rubric, look and see if they're grayed out or not. And then if they're grayed out, then they have to resubmit if they receive like one or zero points in one of those categories. Like I think one of them is if they don't clearly say who the key staff were, who the person is putting together the AAR and the date of the activity and the activity name itself. Like that, that kind of information has to be included or else they get a zero. So I hope this helps explain the after action review. I do plan to make more videos on SDAs, just summarizing the written portions to help you guys. So thank you so much for watching. And that is all folks until next time. Toodles.